When I went to university in Madrid, I lived in the Residencia des Estudiantes, and without it, my life would have been very different. The most important aspect of my social life was the film. Along with Federico, he became my closest friend. We were inseparable. When I was young, movies were a little more than a curiosity, like the sideshow at a country fair. I'm sure my father never saw a movie in his life. The cinema was considered to be all right for the common folk, but scarcely an artistic enterprise. I remember my mother weeping with despair when in 1928 I announced my intention of making a film. It was as if I'd said, Mother, I want to join the circus and be a clown. For the rest of his life. But once his interest had been awakened in literature and art, he determined to go to Paris. In the 1920s, Paris was the artistic capital of the world. There, Bunuel found himself in a liberal and sophisticated atmosphere that made Madrid seem like a long way away. He took French lessons, he learned to dance, and he went to the cinema three times a day. It was in my house that was we were food. Everything so terrible. The ideas. It took me a long time to recover. <laughs> Somebody who had a name to raise the money. They adapted what they have written or talked about with my husband at my home. Sept jours. Sept jours. 
Quelle était la règle d'écriture La règle était refuser toute image qui pouvait avoir une explication rationnelle, ou des souvenirs, ou dire la culture. C'était toute image qui nous apparaissait. Et nous l'avions impressionné, qui nous impressionnait, on l'a jeté sans discuter. Vous aviez un droit de veto l'un sur l'autre On ne l'a pas employé. Non, le veto consistait à dire je ne pas ça. Et l'autre dit c'est effet, mais pas bien. Ensuite, vous avez tourné le film à Paris. Je tourne le film à Paris. Oui. Avec l'argent de votre famille. De ma mère. Et à qui l'avez-vous présenté quand le film a été fini J'étais le fils en que ça a connu mes amis de Sars, je l'ai dit. Alors, un jour, j'ai connu un mandré à la rotonde, à la coupole de connaître les surréalistes. Oui, oui, oui. C'est pour ça que je suis rentré au groupe. All of us were supporters of a certain concept of revolution, and although the surrealists didn't consider themselves terrorists, they were constantly fighting a society they despised. Their principal weapons weren't guns, of course, it was scandal. Scandal was a potent agent of revelation, capable of exposing such social crimes as the exploitation of one man by another, colonialist imperialism, religious tyranny, in sum, all the secret and odious underpinnings of a system that had to be destroyed. Benoit has uh, succeeded in one thing, leading a moral life, and it was much more... <laughs> While Shannon Deleu was a great success, Large Door was a celebrated scandal. Six days after it opened, right-wing demonstrators raided Studio 28 in Paris where it was showing. They threw ink at the screen, fired guns, broke up the theatre.
often asked whatever happened to surrealism. It's a tough question, but sometimes I say that the movement was successful in its details and a failure in its essentials. Breton, Eloi and Aragon are among the best French writers this century. Their books have prominent positions on all library shelves. The work of Ernst Magritte and Dali is famous, high-priced and hangs prominently in museums. There's no doubt that surrealism was a cultural and artistic success, but these were precisely the areas of least importance to most surrealists. Our aim was not to establish a glorious place for ourselves in the annals of art and literature, but to change the world. One good look around is evidence enough of our failure. Needless to say, any other outcome was impossible. Today we see the place of surrealism in the world as infinitesimal. We were nothing just a small group of insolent intellectuals who argued interminably in cafes and published a journal. A handful of idealists, easily divided where action was concerned. And yet, my three-year sojourn in the exalted and yes, chaotic ranks of the movement changed my life. In 19... <laughs> E, e la venne su per viso a parlare e la prenda, si cosa. Allora, le venne e mi venne, guarda di qui, che ha, se non lascio di, se sai ben parlo, good morning, siamo in inglese, se sai in inglese, di una prima di venire alla porta. Se sei più avanti, se sei più avanti, se avete le sandi, tu siamo sempre. Se più avanti, se sei 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 più Its bleak sights didn't suit the optimistic ideas of the new Republican government, and it wasn't shown for four years. Meanwhile, Bunuel was forced to find work as a producer of commercial films in the studios of Madrid. In two years, Bunuel produced no less than 18 films in Madrid, straightforward melodrama and light comedies. They were made against a background of increasing political turmoil, which finally led to the Spanish Civil War. In 1938, he was sent to work in Paris on the Republican government's behalf. And then a year later, shortly before the end of the war, he was told to go to America to advise on films being made about Spain. He took with him his young son, Juan Luis, and his wife, Jeanne. He married her in 1934, and he was with her for the rest of his life. Es una ceremonia secreta para ser celebrada en el fondo subterráneo. Eso parece maravilloso. A mí me parece el erotismo sublime y magnífico. Pero tiene que estar en segunda instancia. Hay que darle el puente para pasar a, al amor carnal ya. Pero la, el, la visión directa me repugna, por ejemplo, un beso. Me repugna mucho los besos en la pantalla. Ese beso apasionado que muchos galanes de jóvenes presumen de besar bien, me repugna muerte. Ahora, si mañana pudiera inventar, nunca se hubieran besado en la pantalla. I like very much women. I think he loves his wife, of course. I think he liked very much women, but I mean, I think from a man of his kind and his uh, age, and uh, his, I think a woman has to be home. el 240. Soy yo, doctor Mikis. Oiga, está sufriendo mucho. 
Muy bien. Venga cuanto antes. Que llegará enseguida. No me oyes, Lope. No me oyes. Hay algo en todos los personajes autobiográficos. What is the reason to strive to come out of poverty? Is to live in poverty is to be so nice, so good, so uh, cherished by the Lord. This was a typically Christian attitude toward poverty that he despised. He said the social order corrupts us all, rich and poor alike. The rich can defend themselves against corruption more than the poor. It is in the poor that one, see, one sees the poison of the social system. And he saw it in Los Olvidados. With great candor he saw it, with great innocence, with no Manichaeanism. The blind man, the kids in the slums, they are terrible, they are terrifying. John Morrow has an incredible way of walking. Her foot trembles just a bit on its high heel, suggesting a certain tension and instability. Allez, allez. Que je les vois ennuyer un peu, ces petites bottines. Jeanne est une marvelous actress, and I kept my direction to a minimum. Montrez-moi la semelle. Oh, elle est un peu trouée, n'est-ce pas Eh bien, je vous les réparerai. Elles seront comme neuves. C'est bien, Marie. Maintenant, asseyez-vous, Marie. Venez. Asseyez-vous. Maintenant, vous allez me les donner, vos petites bottines. Tout de suite. Je vous les prends, vous voyez Et je vais les emporter avec moi, les chères petites bottines. Everything was simple with Don Luis. No rush, no big hectic moments of anxiety, of seeking for the unknown. Seeking for what you cannot explain by words. Mucho racionalmente. No, pero yo me arrepentí. Por, 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 no sé, por, por apariciones instantáneas de cosas que me atraen. Que critico como normalmente parecen malos o buenas, pero con el gusto de no pertenecer a ningún bando, ni religioso ni político, pues las pongo, ¿verdad? Porque me parecen bien. Le parecen mal a mucha gente, lo acepto. A otros me parecen bien, muy bien. No lo no, 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 nunca no, no, temáticamente el erotismo, ni la subversión, ni nada. Soy así y lo he hecho. Mathieu, ce que je fais, moi non plus, je ne l'aime pas. Et toi, ce que tu aimes, c'est ce que je te refuse. Ce n'est pas moi. Il faut que tu attendes, c'est tout. Ça viendra, petit à petit. Tu sais que je suis à toi, et à toi seul, alors qu'est-ce que tu veux plus
te muevas. Among my friends. Amados hermanos, es el dedo de Dios. En esto se ve claramente la voluntad del Altísimo. No por casualidad se ha producido el hurto en un lugar donde tiene un asiento el vicio, la maledicencia y el ocio. El ladrón, a la vez que cometió un acto reprobable a los ojos de Dios, estaba actuando guiado por Satanás contra el propio Satanás. Esa es la paroja divina, hermanos. El pecado castigando al pecado. Una manzana podrida que es sacada del cesto de las manzanas buenas por una mano pecadora. Extraños caminos escoge la justicia del Señor. Y ahora, hijos míos, vamos a rezar por el alma del pecador. La pregunta tuya es totalmente honesta. Es de de muerte. Y todos mis amigos ya me dicen, bueno, va a abrir cinco horas. Y está en con conciencia de mí mismo. Ya vamos a hacer lo que es. Pero Julián no, porque a un sacerdote mucho más severo que él. Viene a confesarme. Me confieso todo en voz alta. Y llamo a mis amigos ateos, comunistas y tal. Están ya presentes. Me acuso de tal creón, que Dios mío, tomen ejemplo de mi muerte. Pues les han compartido conmigo creencias nefastas. Y miren, miren cómo muero. Y muero y voy al infierno porque esto es una broma que les hago a mis amigos. No, ni broma. Oye, no, es, es una no, broma, mis amigos. Ahora, Oye, bueno, otra, otra cosa luego. Testamento. Antes de morir su testamento. Muero yo y al día siguiente, o a los diez días, el notario llama a mis dos hijos y a San para el testamento. Mi inmensa fortuna está allá en el testamento. Entonces, el notario los convoca y está citado doña Juana Buñón y usted. Pues no podemos empezar falsamente. El señor Nelson Rocketeller, que ha dicho que vendría ahora a las 12, son las 12 y llega Nelson. Entonces, ¿por qué está Nelson Rocketeller? Se abre el testamento. Le hago toda mi fortuna a don Nelson Rocketeller. Y dejo a mi mujer a los hijos en la calle. O sea, me muero, escupen mi cadáver con mis amigos, mis mujeres, mis hijos, todo el mundo. Una manera fea buena de sentir la humanidad, ¿no? Muero estupido por todos mis amigos. Oye, Luis, ¿me permite que, me, que dude de la butad que está diciendo y que crea que en el fondo hay algo que no es lo que dice? Bueno, no, no, no lo haré, pero mi idea, y si voy mi, mi antiguo maestro de Marcelo Sá, que al morirme yo me gusta mis felices las tiran al viento y la gente se olvida de mi nombre y de... Bueno, 